Hey you guys, this is our promo before our main show. I wanted to make you aware that we have an amazing YouTube channel uh, which features some of the great behind the scenes footage from our main podcast as well as some amazing other new content as well that we've got coming up as well with some of our speakers, some of our amazing, I suppose, influencers and, and also sports personalities and Olympic athletes from around the world. It's great because you can sit down with a pen and paper if you're extremely busy, you can make some golden nuggets just from a video. And, and you know what? It's great to connect with someone and see someone face to face by watching the YouTube channel. So listen, guys, go to youtube.com forward slash Adam Strong. Make sure you subscribe to that YouTube. In fact, do me a favor. Pause this audio right now. Go straight to the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us and we'll see you there. Take care. Bye. This is the Game Changers Experience. Deep dive conversations with leading business disruptors, Olympic athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and influencers from around the world. This show will teach you insights about the winning principles in mindset, productivity, marketing, branding, entrepreneurship, business strategy, and more. Hosted by Productivity Authority, business strategist, former elite athlete, author, and public speaker, Adam Strong. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Game Changers Experience podcast with myself, Adam Strong. Uh, today, we have an amazing guy uh, who has helped me greatly, actually, in launching my own podcast. His name's called James Burt. James is a, I suppose he's a, a rock star when it comes to getting a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners and influencers in launching their podcast and helping them get into the top 100 charts from around the world, which is great. He's uh, around the world and is also um, a speaker as well. And has also got a, an amazing podcast called The Ultimate Podcast or Build Your Brand Podcast, but also got a company called The Ultimate Podcast Group, which is a full-blown agency for podcasting and stuff. So James, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I'll tell you what, we can actually just stop right now. That, that's enough for me. What a great intro, <laughs> great, great promo for the podcast and the agency. That's everything I need, really. I'm done. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. When, you, uh, when someone else like, talks about you and, and, and kind of reads out your bio and your accomplishments, your achievements, I, I, I don't know how you feel about that, but I get kind of like, oh, really? Have I, have I done all that kind of stuff? Do you ever get that? I, I do, yeah, especially at the moment because I've done like, like 125 plus podcast launches now. 85 to 90 percent of the people that I work with end up in the iTunes top charts, not because I'm a, like a genius in any way, shape, or form, but because I've come up with a, a really good, sustainable strategy for launching podcasts. But when I do hear that, and uh, this time last year I had a seven-figure coaching business that I started from scratch, and I had a six-figure branding agency, and mm. all the stuff that I've done, I do get a little bit of that. And I, and I actually had written some of your stuff that you know, elite athlete, six-figure coach business strategist to the stars um, game changers next level club or the podcast and when you hear it listed you're like oh is that me and sometimes you know what I think as forward thinking goal chasing entrepreneurs it's really difficult for us to slow down and give ourselves that mm. moment of oh, actually I have done that I pat myself on the back but I think that's yeah. really important if you can be mindful to do that sometimes yeah I agree and and, and here's the thing I I, I I don't know. It's my, my conditioning more than anything else as, as you know, as a former elite athlete, but with me, I find it difficult to, I suppose, acknowledge what has been achieved in the show. And then you kind of look back and, and especially at the end of the year, I'm very good at, I don't know about you, but at the end of the year, I like to kind of have a two week break, sit back, reflect, see what's uh, been achieved, plan for the new year, that kind of stuff. You think, wow, have I achieved that stuff? That's a crazy man. How much has gone through that? Yeah, I, I had it um, just a couple of days ago, actually. So we've, we've launched our first ever um, joint influencer joint venture partnership. So mm. I came up with this like business model that I was, I was looking at how the podcast industry was working. I was like, there's a big gap in the market there. I should go and fill it. That was kind of my, my plan. And we, so we, we basically launched our, our first ever project with Natasha Hamilton, who used to be an Atomic Kitten. So she's been in the media spotlight, international pop star for 20 years, sold 10 million records, you know, and is now a very successful uh, entrepreneur and uh, fitness and wellness influencer. And I approached her direct, literally via an Insta story uh, or Insta voice note. And within you know four weeks, we've got this podcast up and running. It's, it's literally, as we're talking live now, it's in the iTunes top um, 20 for the health and fitness category. You know, that, uh, intro episodes with Dame Kelly Holmes and Matt Johnson off the telly. She's already been getting Insta messages from people who are saying, oh my God, your story about overcoming postnatal depressions that had such an impact on me, blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, I sat there the other day thinking that it, I was like, 
oh, this podcast comes out. Do you know what it was? It was a really weird thing. I looked on iTunes just to double check all the systems had worked and that it was going to appear in the right categories, etc. And I saw uh, Live Better with Natasha, the, the name of the podcast. And then underneath it, as un- where the sort of the production companies listed, it said Ultimate Podcast Group. And I'd never, I've never listed the Ultimate Podcast Group before. And I was like, wow, for a business that was started out of necessity, rather than sort of just, you know, joy because of lockdown, et cetera. In three months, we've gone from a standing start to launching a dozen shows, creating this new business model, working with multiple people, turned over some good money, had some great wins, had some great lessons or losses, however you want to perceive it. And it was at that moment, I was like, oh, bloody hell, in three months from a standing start, we're actually doing this. Um, So that was the last time I sort of stepped back and went, Oh, wow. Well done. Pat yourself on the back. But I, I am generally um, quite poor at it, which I think most entrepreneurs yeah. in general are. It's just, a, it's just a general pattern that we have. But listen, I suppose my first question is, is when a lot of business owner, owners and entrepreneurs, I suppose, approach you for your expertise, what do you think their biggest pain point is when it comes to building a brand? The, I would say the biggest pain point is they don't really know what their core values or their USP are. Mm. You know, a lot of people will sell people, will try and a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners will try and sell people on the, uh, on the how, you know, this is how we do it. This is how we're better. This is how we make change, blah, blah, blah. They don't sell people enough on the why. And this is not like an episode to go, you know, you've got to find your big why, man. Because I think sometimes that's a bit of a airy fairy needle in a bloody haystack, quite frankly. But ultimately, I think when you know your, uh, I make people go through this all the time. I've got a branding document, which I force people to do. And I, I'm very intentional with the language force. Um, core values, USPs, mission statement, ideal buyer profile, stakeholders, and what problem they solve. And I make sure that they know what their elevator pitch is within 20 seconds. And before Mm. I work with anyone, whether it be on a podcast or as a brand consultant or as a business coach or whatever, I make them know this stuff because ultimately, Mm. without understanding that, I think you could be building a brand in the way that you could go on a journey without a map or a sat nav. You could just Mm. get really busy driving around in a big circle and not go anywhere. Mm. Absolutely. What what is the... Well, I guess what what are the big difference between, I suppose, building a brand and being branded? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I'm gonna have to play for some time here and just um, really <laughs> absorb that question. What's the difference? I think the, the the difference between building a brand and being branded is the intention. Mm. That sounds a bit wafty, but there's a difference between if I could I could brand you. Mm. But that, and I could go, Adam is this, and he's an elite athlete, and he's a six figure coach, and he's a business coaching result strategist, blah, blah, blah. I can give you all of these labels, I can give you all of this stuff. Yes. But ultimately, I think there's a difference between me giving you that and you going, I, this is what my brand is. Your brand, ultimately, I think there's a big uh, misconception with what brand and branding is in general. It's become very cool now. Everyone's building a personal brand, man. Your brand is your reputation. Yeah. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Sure. Uh, and, and ultimately, you don't really control what your brand is because your brand is uh, how your ideal market or how everyone perceives you in their mind's eye, which again, mm. we're going a little bit airy, fairy spiritual here, but that is ultimately it. You know, what Coca-Cola means to me, I means to you might be something very different. You know, I like Coca-Cola. I hear that of the can. And I'm thinking, oh, hot summer day, lovely, refreshing drink. You as an elite athlete are probably thinking, disgusting caramel, sugar, poison. Don't put it in your body. You won't be able to run at your peak performance, etc. So my perception of the Coca-Cola brand is very different from yours potentially. Um, but, but as the brand itself, they can try and curate the message and curate the viewpoint they want to give everybody, but they don't ultimately control what that brand means. But there's a lot of, you know, half-assed bloody coaches out there at the moment who are like oh your brand your logo your brand is this your brand your website it's not your brand is your reputation and if you think of your brand in that way i think it could really simplify it in a way that means you can actually control the narrative a little bit more easily and understand what you're trying to control so um interesting question here from my not more please not more don't get anything <laughs> more difficult than the last one jesus christ you have me on the hot there <laughs> listen this is this is like the the larry king show right and uh this is full hey, on this is full on uh, you know uh, you're gonna have a mind workout more than anything else and this is the reason why a lot of our listeners love this because you know i just completely off the cusp of my of the collar we just literally just you know, just have fun and, and go from there, really. But listen, podcasting, right? Why podcasting? Because it seems that everyone is doing a podcast or everyone has a podcast and stuff. Isn't it really too late to have a podcast? I mean, isn't it but kind of expired? Isn't it kind of, you know, the, the, the time has gone on and whatever it is. But tell me, 
Uh, has podcasting no, expired? No, don't say that. Don't say that to people. You know, you're you're one of the leading lights in the in the entrepreneurial coaching podcast world. Don't <laughs> slag it off now. Come on. Um, no, but but good question. It's, it's something that I get asked all the time. You know, has the bubble burst? And the answer is no. At the moment, as it stands, there are 1.3 million active shows on the iTunes platform. Not all of which are uh, are, are still live if that makes sense so there might be like series one of a show which is still sat there yeah. so it's still classed as active but it's not a proactively you know adding more shows every week if that makes sense there's 1.3 million shows on on itunes which is the biggest platform going and we talked about this off air you know everyone's like oh spotify are going to take a big chunk of their market share don't get me wrong from a perception standpoint they definitely are but in terms of listening numbers itunes is still the biggest game in town by a country mile yeah. Will that change at some point, but not for a long while? Um, so it's 1.3 million. Let's say even if they were all, all active, 1.3 million shows. Let's compare that. And it is comparative to say like a Facebook fan page, for example. There are 43 million Facebook fan pages. That, and if you think about that, it's just on one social media platform. There's what, 400 million users of Zoom. There's about, you know, half a billion people who are now on Instagram or whatever the number may be. Mm -hmm. So yes, podcasting is exploding. Yes, there's more people doing it, but still comparatively, there's 1.3 million podcasts out there compared to 43 million Facebook fan pages. So it just shows you how, um, how early on in the cycle we still are. I know you've got a very international audience, but I, I, I deal with a lot of like UK business owners specifically. And, you know, I did some, some digging on the stats recently and we've still only got 21% of people who listen to a podcast on a weekly basis in the UK, which is about 7.1 million people to get to the global average, which is 36% of people who've listened on a monthly basis. We've still got 15% to go just to get in line with the rest of the, of, of the globe. So this is a, a medium that is exploding, but is still it's still very early. It's a really weird one, right? Because it's been quite slow to adopt. So, it's, so podcasting looks like it's brand new, but it's just, it's just sort of blowing up at the moment. But it's been around since 2003. So it's been around for a decade and a half, effectively. But I think because it's grown slowly, but now it is exponentially exploding, I think it's there for the long term. You know, you get something like a TikTok or a Musical.ly or an Insta or whatever. Will Instagram be there in 20 years' time? No, it'll be in some guys. Facebook won't be the same as it is now. Podcasting will still be there. Podcasting is going to replace heritage mediums like radio and like TV, for example. So it's going to be there for the long haul. 50 years time, people will still be doing podcasts. The radio will be dead and podcasting will be the new radio. Yeah. Where, so I think it's, it's, you've got to be in it um, for the long haul as well. Absolutely. Um, what's going to say? I mean, there are millions of, like you've just mentioned, there's, there's, 1.3 million just on iTunes in terms of podcasting, which is a good point. But what advice do you give to, I suppose, business owners and entrepreneurs more importantly about how they can create a competitive edge that they, that essentially if they was to start podcasting, what is it that they, what advice would you give to someone in terms of getting that competitive edge about how is it that they, their podcast is going to be unique to all the other podcasters out there? I think one of the things it goes back to sort of branding that we talked about earlier, you know, know why you're doing a podcast. You know, there, there are lots of business podcasts. There are lots of coaching podcasts. There are lots of podcasts about podcasting. There's a podcast for pretty much every niche and subcategory of niche that you can imagine. Yeah. But the point of difference, like with your brand, especially if you're building a personal brand, the point of difference is you. What is your genuine USP? What's the genuine thing that you're going to give to the listeners? What value? How are you going to educate, entertain, or inform that audience? That's really important. Competitive edge, obviously, you know, there's like stru structures and strategic ways to launch your podcast in the right way, mm -hmm. which gives it the maximum ability to gain a, a, a global organic audience from day one. You know that yourself because I coached you on it and you absolutely smashed it and did exactly that. So yeah, you can do like tactical stuff to get a competitive edge. But more than that, I, I dive into why is it that you're doing a podcast? What are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? What do you want to say to people? So for example, with my show, Building the Brand, I wanted to have in-depth conversations with people who are building exciting businesses and brands who've got lessons that they can share with the audience. And I wanted to have, and the, the, the most important part of that sort of mission statement is in-depth I wanted to speak to people in a way. I don't want to talk about, oh, hey, Adam, tell me, how did you become a coach? Oh, hey, Adam, how did you become a six-figure coach? Oh, you know, I want to dive in, like, what's your backstory? 
what's your heritage? How did you transition from elite athlete, uh, athletics into coaching? Was that a mindset always there? What was the reason you got into athletics? You know, what was the personal reasons why you became such an elite competitor? Blah, blah, blah. I want to dive into that level of, of depth. And because I know in real concrete terms what I'm trying to do, I know exactly the sort of content that I want to make. And also, conversely, I know exactly the kind of content I don't want to make. Mm -hmm. I had a guy approach me a couple of weeks ago, got a massive following over in the States. And he's like, hey, I'd love to do a podcast, but I've seen his stuff. He's got a big, big following. Loads of watches, loads of cars, loads of, you know, some assistance with workout uh, recovery, shall we say. He looks like he's kind of juicy, um, <laughs> if you catch my drift. But I was like, do you know what? He, I know for a fact he would drive 1,000 downloads on day one of that episode launch. That'd be great. Do I want 1,000 of his listeners? Yeah, potentially. But he hasn't got a story to tell. He's shown the end result. He hasn't shown the journey. He's just this juiced up geezer in a nice car with a fancy watch. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's not what I'm interested in. So for, as I say, it's because I've got almost like, I look at the, the brand or the core values of the, of the show as my, my route map. Like I know the journey I'm trying to go on. I know the conversations that I want to have. And if I can't have that content or those yeah. conversations, I just won't do the show. And that's why I've been able to, uh, you know, has that been at the detriment of not having on some some like low hanging fruit in terms of big audience numbers? Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? I'd rather have a hundred of the right people listening mm. than ten thousand of the wrong sort of people listening. I agree. And this is the Agreed. other thing as well. Success within well, with anything is is much like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. I had a guy on Monday. Uh, first thing, don't do cold call. Um, sales closing <laughs> meetings on on Monday at nine a.m. Jesus Christ, that's a lesson I learned. But this guy was like you know, how would I know my podcast has been successful? I was like, well, it depends on what success is for you. You know, I've, I'm doing, I've done shows that have launched seven figure businesses. That's success. I've launched, I've launched podcasts that have been, you know, highlighting a, a, a guy up Mount Everest while he's climbing it. I've heard, you know, we've had chopper sound effects as he's about to be airlifted down because his lungs are about to explode because of an illness that he got up the mountain which engages audience massively. That's success. So it depends on what you want. It's not always about the, and I know Gary Vee, who you're a fan of, and I'm also a massive fan of, talks about this. It's not about the vanity metric. It's not about the hundreds of thousands of downloads necessarily. It's about the right kind of listening audience. And again, you only get the right audience by creating the right content, by knowing who you're making stuff for effectively. Quality versus quantity, I guess. Absolutely. And there's a, there's a bit of an element of both. Don't get me wrong. For, for example, we were talking again before we started. I've just launched, um, I've just started to get hundreds of downloads a day mm. in India. You know, I don't know why. I've, maybe I've, I've, there's a big app over there called Ghana. Maybe it's sort of popped up on the Ghana app or mm. something like that. Maybe it's in the curated category. I haven't been able to find out. Yeah. But it's not, don't get me wrong, from an ego standpoint, it's like, oh, it's nice to have, like, you know, yesterday I had 406 downloads by lunchtime. I was like, well, I feel very good about being a podcaster today. But equally, <laughs> are those 406 people in India of actual any value to me? as a business owner but again it comes down to what is my metric of success yeah. am i doing the podcast to monetize or am i doing the podcast to elevate my brand mm. um i mean podcasting is a great way to essentially get content out there as we know and it can be i suppose i'm going to call it recycled into many different mediums but we've heard of the terminology content is king but why from your perspective why is content king because it's the way that you engage the audience. You know, back in the day, if people wanted to be entertained, they had to turn their TV on. Or if people wanted to be entertained, they had to turn the radio on. And you had these massively high barriers to entry. If you wanted to broadcast yourself, mm. you had to get the gatekeepers at Radio 2 to give you a gig. Or if you wanted to broadcast yourself on the, uh, the medium of video, you had to get someone at ITV to think that you were good enough. You know, the barrier to entry was huge. The barrier to entry isn't huge anymore. However, it's never, it's, never been more diff it's never been more easy to get seen. It's never been more difficult to be heard. And I think that's the difference. But content is king because it's where the, the, the focus, the, where is attention is there. It's on your phone. It's on the screen. And ultimately, if you're not creating content, then you are... And people are creating content consciously and subconsciously, by the way. And people, when I talk to people about their brand, they're like... Oh, you know, well, I'm not interested in uh, building a brand on Facebook. I'm like, well, you post on Facebook. Therefore, you are building a subconscious brand. You're just not consciously curating the message of that brand, at which point they're like, oh, shut up. I don't want to talk about it, which is fine. <laughs> uh, but content is king because people are looking now to be entertained by content. It's how we can, you know, when was the last time you sat down and, and just had the TV on and sat through the adverts? You don't. 
you watch Netflix when you want to. Well, you probably don't because you're so elite. You're like, my mind said it's beautiful, man. And if I'm not running, I'm not doing nothing. No, I don't. I don't have what time to watch TV. Full stop. Yeah, <laughs> but for those for those of us who are not uh, elevating ourselves at the the peak performance <laughs> levels of Adam Strong, you know, you you watch Netflix when you want to. You watch Amazon Prime when you want to. You listen mm. to a podcast when you want to. People are now content is our entertainment it's our information and effectively now as a marketeer or as a brand builder it's your ability to 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 get into the eyeballs and the ear holes of ear holes that's a horrible phrase <laughs> eyeballs and the ears of of your ideal demographic that's why it's so important because that's where the tension that's where the attention is and again that's where people say to me why should i start a podcast now because the listening audience is getting bigger and bigger and bigger they're looking for the content if they don't listen to you know for example if they are interested in the opinion of a former elite athlete and six figure mm -hmm. high performance coach, they will find that somewhere. If you don't make the game changes experience, they're going to go to somebody else. Yeah. It's that absolutely. simple. It's interesting as well. Cause we've got a uh, new technology that's come into place. Like we had Amazon echo, for example, we've got Alexa. So the technology's there and you can listen to podcasts, not just even on your phone. You can listen to it on your, I suppose what do they call those little micro Smart speakers. speakers, smart speakers. That's what they call them exactly. So it's interesting. Bezos spies. That's what they call them. <laughs> Bezos spies. Love it. Very cool. So, any advice for existing podcasters? That's people who currently have a podcast, um, but they maybe want to revamp or improve their podcast. What advice would you give them to? I, this is really interesting, actually. I've been doing a lot of consultancy recently, and I'm not cheap as a consultant either. So. Uh, you know, but people are like, oh, I've got a podcast, I've done the hard work, I've got it out there, and I'm just not getting any traction with it. And very often, it's very simple stuff that they're not doing correct. And I find myself charging, I, I feel almost a bit of guilt, because I'm charging hundreds of pounds an hour to teach some really like simple stuff. But people just, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Um, so I would say if you're an existing podcaster, and this is a tip that I've come up with this week, on a monthly basis, put it in your diary mm. to, to go into the back end of your software. So whether you use Libsyn or Podbean or Anchor or whatever, mm. go into the back end of your software and read the stats. And what do I mean by read the stats? Look at the most popular episodes. Mm. What was it? Is there, a, is there a correlation? Is there a pattern? Is there certain stuff that your audience is really resonating with? Let's say you did an episode with a, a social media don and you get twice the amount of downloads of someone who's talking about... Um, you know, spirituality and, you know, forest bathing. Wow, weird analogy. Um, I can't imagine you're much of a forest bather, Adam, but maybe you are. I don't know. I don't want to cast, don't want to cast aspersions at you. But for example, then you might go, right, well, I want to do more social media-based content than forest bathing. Why am I still saying that word? Um, I've never said it on a podcast ever, and now I've said it twice. But just that kind of, it sounds really simple, but that kind of stuff people miss all the time. You know, the stats don't lie. Data doesn't lie. So go back into your stats and go, right, what is the most popular kind of content that I've got? Mm. The other thing that I'd say, and you, you touched on it a minute ago, you know, there's all these new platforms that keep popping up. Make sure you're on all the platforms that you can be on. So for example, within Libsyn, which I know you use because I've coached you and I made you set it up in the right way. Uh, within Libsyn, it's very, very easy to get into Ghana, for example, this app that I mentioned a minute ago in, in India, which is driving, you know, 300 down, three, 400 downloads for me a day. Literally a click of three buttons and my content's there. Yeah. Same with Amazon Music. That popped up last week and everyone was yeah. going, oh, this is fantastic. It's well simple. Yeah. But now you can literally go, Alexa, play the Game Changers Experience podcast or Alexa, play Building the Brand podcast. And by the way, I've said that both because hopefully people are listening near their Alexas and now it's going to set them off so we get a few more <laughs> sneaky downloads. So I had some people complaining on my Insta stories going, can you stop setting my Alexa off, please? I was like, nope, I can't. It's a tactic. Um, <laughs> But again, that's, you could look at that and go, oh, how do I get my podcast onto Amazon? It's three clicks. It's three clicks, that's it. So the, the, the advice that I, uh, I would give is uh, on a monthly basis, go in and read your stats mm. and then also have a look at, to make sure that you're in, on all the platforms that you can be on. And the final thing, if you've gone to the effort of making a podcast, if you've gone to the effort of securing the guest and doing the recording and making the recording and producing it and having an intro and an outro and the artwork, you've done all that hard work, do not forget to tell people about your podcast. Mm. What a lot of people do is they, I've got a podcast that comes out every week on a Wednesday at nine o'clock. They tell people on Wednesday at nine o'clock, hey, my podcast's out. Then they don't talk about it again for the rest of the week. Then next week, hey guys, my podcast's out again. 
that consistency of content you need to have. So things like quote graphics and audiograms and generalized marketing really, really works well. And again, you're someone who absolutely smashes it. You can't, I mentioned this to you before we started, you can't go a day or you know two days without seeing something about a podcast you've just done or you're about to do. You know, you, you mentioned earlier, you recorded with um, the double world record cycling champion. I knew about that. I was like, how did I know about that? I thought that episode had already come out, but it hasn't, but you recorded it. So you promoted it just because you recorded it. So you're smashing the promo and that's the difference that makes the difference. I, I don't know about you, but I find that consistency is key. It doesn't matter. I mean, 100%. I mean, I mean, I'm not being, I'm not being funny guys, right? If you're listening to this, right. And you think to yourself, okay, well, I've got a podcast or I would like to start up a podcast or for whatever reason is that, I mean, how, lo- how quick does it take to put up a quick tweet? How quick does it take to record a, a 60 second video and put it up on LinkedIn and put a few hashtags? It doesn't really take up a lot of time. And, yeah. um, and I think it, I don't know about you, James, but for, from my perspective is that consistency is key. And, and if it's for me, like the podcast to me is my way to connect to you guys that are listening in more importantly to add value to people's lives, but it's important to me, you know, and if it's important to you, then you'll do exactly the same. You know, and that's how I see things. You know what I mean? I, and, and I get it. You know, there are a lot of distractions in the world. We all have different priorities. But it goes back to what you said at the beginning, James, which is all around what are your key values, you know, and, and, and how do you put that stuff out? So this, this is the point. other thing we talked about a minute ago, like the success of a podcast, for example. A lot of the time you sort of you, you look at your download numbers. I said, you know, I've had 400 and 406 downloads yesterday by lunchtime. Actually, if I if I go a layer deeper than that no i've had 406 human beings take the time around the world and when i think about it most of them in india which is a country i've never been to i can't speak the language i know nothing about the culture i'm a bit ignorant to all of it but 406 people in india have clicked have taken the effort to go to their phone click and download my podcast i haven't had 406 downloads i've had 406 connections with human beings and maybe that's actually i'm sort of like inadvertently coaching myself here a little bit that's actually the the way to look at it because sometimes you can get sort of lost in that vanity metric of well you know well i've only had 100 downloads today that's 100 people who've listened to what you've got to say there's 100 people who value your opinion enough to listen to the words that come out of your mouth that's a big that's a big deal that's a big deal do you know uh interestingly enough do you feel that the finished product like i mean my show, your show, you know, we have the intros, the outros and things like that. Do you think that makes a really big difference to someone's podcast? Because I know that you, there are some podcasters that are listening to this or maybe thinking about that, maybe going and using a platform, but just recording it and just uploading it on, no editing, just kind of raw footage. I mean, do you think that really harms the numbers? I mean, what, are, what, are your, what is your view on that? Yeah, I do think it harms the numbers. The, the reason being, you know, you could do some really simple stuff, like say an intro and an outro. You don't have to spend hours and hours on producing c- content. You know, you know from the training that I delivered to, to you as part of the uh, the online coaching that I did. Yeah. You know, you don't need to be a, a, a whiz kid. I know you've got sort of a, a marketing team who does all of the, the logistical stuff for you because you're, um, you know, a, a coaching diva or whatever, whichever way you want to spin it. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, you know, I, I do, I do a, a podcast every single day. It's about 10 minutes long. And it takes me, from the 10-minute recording, it takes me about another 10, 20 minutes to get that podcast edited, uploaded and on the platforms. That's it. That's all it takes me. It doesn't have to be really, really long. But I do think the intros and outros, and those kinds of small elements of production value do make a difference because the reason being, it's the first, it's, it's, it's the reason why TV shows have theme music. It's the reason why do, 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 do brands have theme music and audio idents, which grab your attention and makes it stand out from the crowd. If that makes sense. There's a million and one coaching podcasts out there. There's a million fitness podcasts out there. What's a differentiator and things like an intro and an outro are really important to differentiate yourself. You can make it sound like a bigger production than it actually is. You know, my, my podcast, Building the Brand, it has swirly music and it has all these kind of beautiful production values. And sometimes if I make a really big point of something, I'll put a big echo all over it. It's me sat here with this 15 quid microphone in my bedroom, in my spare, in, not in my bedroom. My wife would be like, get that out of the bedroom. Um, but in, in my home office, in a little, which was a spare room and is now a home office. Yeah. So you can make it sound like a much bigger production. This is another great thing, the barriers to entry and it's leveled the playing field. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got as much ability to get to the audience as 
the BBC have with their million pound studios. That's fantastic. Um, so it does make a bit of a difference. The other thing on the back end of it, the outro, they did some research last year, 56% of people will click a link in the show notes when instructed to do so. So if you've got an outro, it's like, thanks for listening to this episode of the Game Changing Experience. And I know this because I've, obviously I did your outro or my, my team did your outro. Did. If you've enjoyed the show, please give us a five-star review. If you want to connect with Adam directly, click the link in the show notes now. 56% of people who hear that message are likely to click the link because they've been told to do so. Generalized online media, the, the, what they call the CTA, the call to action click-through rate is 4%. Mm. So you've got such a bigger opportunity. And it's just by doing those little tweaks that makes all the big difference. You, again, from the training, you know, mm. I talk about one percenters, one percent activities. So things like getting your show notes right, getting the SEO right, getting the call to action right in the intro and the outro. It makes one percent a difference, but one percent accumulatively combined makes a big difference. Yeah, very good point. Um, it's interesting, actually, when you, uh, at the beginning when you were just talking, I had this uh, flashback. To block, do you remember the uh, game show Blockbusters with Bob Holden? But, oh, Bob Holden, yes. Yeah. I love people, please, Bob, yeah. <laughs> what it was show? Uh, I, I don't know, it just kind of like came to my head. I was like, where did that come from? It's just completely out of the ordinary. Anyway. But that's uh, an interesting point, though, as you say about Blockbuster and those things that, that sort of you remember from back in the day, like gladiators or yes. thundercats or whatever what was it that made you if you played the theme tune now to blockbusters or or thundercats or he-man or whatever it will emotionally take you back to a place that's yeah. the ability that music has yeah. you know i can't remember a single episode of thundercats but i can remember <laughs> how the theme music makes, used to make me feel when um what was he called lioness or whatever he was um used to come on the screen and go oh, i am he man, <laughs> I mix I mix up my my TV analogies here, but I don't remember a single episode, but I remember the theme music. So again, that's the yeah. sort of thing where people will hear a podcast intro. I do it for my favorite shows. I hear the intro music, and it makes me feel something. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I'm excited again now. Yeah, very good. Um, I'm conscious of time, but I have a final question for you. Influencers and yes. getting, getting influencers on, 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 your sh on your podcast or just generally reaching out to them and building a relationship. Where, how do you start? Uh, the easiest way, where, where possible, get a third party warm introduction. Like we were talking again before we started recording. In fact, we should have started recording about 15 minutes before we've done this podcast because <laughs> you've given away loads of gold. But I was saying about how, how impressed I've been about the, the level and the consistency of great quality guests that you've had on thank you until until today um but <laughs> and you said well, I'm, i don't have an issue with guests because they get recommended to me they come to yeah. me mm -hmm. or someone gives me an intro so that's the that's the easiest way so if someone you know can give you an intro there's nothing like third party validation or a warm lead uh, to to get somebody to you know transact with you whether that transaction doesn't have to be financially could be you know transacting with their time mm -hmm. so that would be the number one way if you're going after cold leads or influence leads the best hack and the best tactic and i learned this off joe wicks um the body coach yes is insta voice notes insta voice notes are so powerful i've done it with um grant cardone elena cardone i've done it with jay shetty i've landed speaking gigs from it i've done all kinds of cool stuff literally by sending a voice note because you can't uh, pre-record a voice note you have to do it live it has to be you and I always and I always start with something that I've seen and why I think they should come on the show so it's not just like oh hey Jay Shetty I'd love you to come on my show please thanks let me know <laughs> with him I reached out I said um uh, I think it was oh hey Jay I've just I've just been listening to um Jim Quick's podcast episode that you're on phenomenal stuff what a great in uh, you know what a great episode where Jim's talking about how you can speed up the the mind to learn and absorb as much information as possible juxtaposed with you talking about slowing down I thought it was a real beautiful yin and yang kind of episode I heard that you mentioned that you've got um think like a monk coming out in the next couple of months I'd love to get it on my show it's an iTunes top 50 podcast called building the brand I'll send you some details of it I appreciate you're a super busy guy but if you'd like to speak to my audience of existing business owners and entrepreneurs I'd absolutely love to have you on so you can share your message with that audience leave it there and then I follow up with a couple of screenshots which is the artwork iTunes top 50, blah, blah, blah. And then I send a little note going, just send you some images with a couple of screenshots about it being in the charts. He said, so just so you know, it's a legit show. Look forward to hearing back from you. He responded within about 20 minutes and said, yeah, speak to Oliver um, at my publishing company because they're organizing all the PR around the book. I'd love to do it. That's Sweet. how it worked. So yeah, Insta voice note and then follow it up with a graphic, I would say, or so they know because at the end of the day, people now are getting 
probably 200 requests a day to be on podcast. Just because you've got a podcast doesn't mean it's exciting for everybody else, if that makes sense. Agreed. Um, Alan, Alan Barrett from Grenade, actually, got so bored of rejecting my offer to record a podcast, he started his own podcast called Pull the Pin. And he actually, <laughs> said, he actually said to me, it wasn't just me specifically that he did it for, but I reached out to him for like the fourth time. I was like, hey, Alan, hope you and Julie are doing really well. I've seen this latest innovation of the flipping chocolate bars. I'm eating about 40 quid worth of your chocolate a week. Fancy coming on my podcast. He went, mate, I'm literally getting 250 uh, requests a week. I'm, I just got so bad, I'm going to do my own podcast so that people stop asking me. I like, okay, sure. <laughs> Well, that worked out well. But yeah, but Insta voice notes is, is the best way to do it and then follow it up with people. But be, under, be, be aware, especially when you start off your podcast, just because you've got a show doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to be able to secure guests as easily or as quickly as you think. And also, you know, your mate who knows someone down the pub who once sold a dog to Jermaine <laughs> Genius's best mate so he can get you Jermaine Genius on your podcast, that ain't going to work either. That might work in the UK potentially but i don't think i don't think it works for some of our listeners around the world but uh it's all good we're talking about the power of podcasting though (laughs) um what they joe biden and trump are going to do like a debate and who have they asked to curate it bloody joe rogan no way for real honestly honestly that's crazy that I think crazy. Joe should only do it if he gets him into his podcast studio and he's still allowed to smoke a massive spliff like he does with <laughs> movie or one of his other guests. I think that's the only way he should do it. But I thought that was really interesting. The fact of all the people on the planet, you know, who could curate a political debate of, to run the free world. And he wants Joe Rogan to sit down with him and Joe Biden. I was like, well, that tells you everything you need to know. I think that's fantastic. I, 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 think, that would, I think that would turn into a, a, a three-way MMA flight. You know, yeah, yeah, that's what it would, yeah, it would. You know? it'd, be, it'd be a four-hour podcast ending up in a in a punch-up, which Joe Rogan, <laughs> which ultimately Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan wins. will win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, listen, guys, hope that you've enjoyed um, today's show. J- James, just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show today. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. Thank you very much for having me. I I was uh yeah really excited about. It. It's always nice to go on people's shows, but especially when I've had a, a hand in helping them create something. I think what you've created with Game Changers Experience is genuinely making a big impact and i think you know for, for the listeners but i think for you personally mm. you know in 18 months time you'll look back at the podcast as being a big catalyst to whatever it is that you're doing i know you did obviously the the summit and stuff like that but i think this is going to be a real really integral part of you growing the brand of you moving forward so thank you for having me on i genuinely appreciate it appreciate your kind words james and um i was going to say guys if you want to get connected with james interested in podcasting Click on the links below in the blurb and uh, also just mention where you come from. Make sure that you listen to the, uh, that you mentioned the Game Changers experience and he'll be like, oh yeah, that's great. Fantastic. So, uh, and then happy, and James will be happy in due kind to respond to your messages. So listen, guys, hope that you've enjoyed today. Uh, Have a great day and see you on the next Game Changers experience podcast. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, you guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening in to this episode of the Game Changers Experience. I hope that you got some amazing value, some great insights and golden nuggets that you can implement into your business straight away. I would really, really appreciate it if you could leave a five-star review on the button below. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.